Hello, good morning, what's up? Everything has gone kind of wrong. The red velvet cake fell apart, as you can see, by this bowl of red velvet cake right here. So I had to stay up all night making another one. I'm very tired, it's the morning of the wedding. I have band rehearsals in about one hour, and I haven't left the house yet or got ready yet. We'll, we'll just see how this goes. beautiful people welcome back to my channel thank you for clicking on another video in today's video as you always already know by the title I'm making my friend's wedding cake it is a little bit late the day before the wedding because I wanted the cakes to be super fresh but I think it's gonna be a long day <laughs> I'm making a three-tier semi-naked wedding cake for my good friends Joe and Alex they are an incredible couple um, Jo is just amazing uh, yeah really love her and I'm making their wedding cake. They asked me to and I was like, yes, I am gonna go all out on this because you know me, I don't do things, I don't do things in a normal way. <laughs> I'm not a professional baker. I haven't had any training, anything I've learned, I've learned from online or from cookbooks. And um, so I thought I would just share with you the process and yeah, and I really want this to be perfect for them. We had a really nice cake tasting evening. So I wanted her to have like the whole bridal experience. You gotta, gotta taste some cakes, right? We had a nice cake tasting evening where we designed the cake, we chose the flavors, and it was so much fun just to hang out with them and just spend time with them as a couple. So yeah, I have a design that I'm following and I have the recipes and I thought I would just share this experience with you. I have made a wedding cake once before. I made my sister's six tier wedding cake back in 2017. If you haven't seen that video, I'll pop the link in the description. You can go check it out. That was that was a, an experience, but I'm praying that this one goes more smoothly. It's a much more simple cake. It's smaller to begin with. And I learned a lot from that last experience, so I know more what I'm doing, and hopefully there won't be any scary surprises. That sounds good. Then please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you like it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and click subscribe for more videos. I share mainly health and lifestyle stuff, so sorry that this isn't like an official baking channel, but I do bake from time to time. So this is the design for the cake, as you can see, um, it's a three tier cake. It's going to be nine inch high, so quite a tall cake. Um, it's no longer going to be on a log, it'll be on a barrel. We've got some foliage. The bottom tier is vanilla, 12 inch, and then some more foliage, then a 10 inch red velvet with uh, cheese, cream cheese frosting, and then my favourite, the Oreo buttercream cake. On the top with again some Oreos on top and some dark chocolate so it's a bit of a unique wedding cake um, it's gonna be a lot of fun I feel like it really sums them up as a couple it's fun it's beautiful delicious and this is just what we had from the planning evening so we just kind of brainstormed some ideas and um, decided what they wanted and um, did some like literal planning because I'm also on the band so I'm also singing at the wedding so there was a lot to do um, but yeah this is what we're going for. Let's get baking. Okay, so the two 12 inch pans are full. I've made three lots of vanilla cake mix and tried to split them evenly. I want this cake to be nine inches high, which is pretty high. So I'm planning on doing four layers of two inch cake. So just to double check that it's deep enough, um, that is one cake and I wanna make sure that they're about the same height as well. That one is a bit deeper, so I might move some mix over. Um, but yeah, I think the height of these cakes is really important. I don't want to have to add loads of buttercream in between layers to make it taller. Um, so we're using a lot of cake mix here today, guys. Maybe I'll do a blog. Would you want a blog? Writing up the ingredients and the specific mixes I'm using. Um, yeah, let me know. So this is the Oreo cake mixture. On the last batch, I mixed in the crushed Oreos too much, which was really annoying. So I made another batch and we're going to do six tiers on the Oreo cake to make it nice and high. And I'm just going to alternate them. So hopefully it won't be too sweet because if you over mix in the Oreos, then it just gets too sweet because it's actually just like eating Oreos and you just want to gently combine them. So that looks much better than the last mix. And I'll just alternate the layers and um, hopefully it'll be fine. So I've got the three eight inch tins just there um, lined and greased. I'm just going to weigh them to make sure that they are all about the same, so that's one, five, five, one, one, five, two, six, 
1592. So I could add some of the 1592 into the 1526, just a tiny bit, because I really want to make sure they're all the same height and all kosher and even. So then when we slice into the cake and eat it, it's going to be perfect on the inside and the outside because that's a good philosophy for life, am I right? I just wanted to show you these cake sleeves that I'm using. So normally I use, well I say normally, recently I started using make your own cake sleeves, which is just foil and paper towels, but I've just used these official ones, which I think cost about maybe a fiver each, um, and they're great. It basically means that your cake rises really evenly, so you don't have to cut off massive amounts, um, and you literally just wrap them around the cake like this if I can actually do it these I got them in a really big size because I needed ones that fit the 12 inch cake tin um, but I think that's even better because then I get a double layer on my 8 inch cake tin so yeah I just got really big ones if you're going to be investing in these you may as well just get bigger ones I don't really see the harm in it um, and I wrap it around like that and then when I pop it in the oven it means that the outside of the cake doesn't cook too fast because obviously it's directly against the middle as opposed to the cake that's in the centre of the tin and so it just cooks really evenly and rises evenly and makes it have a really nice soft side not like hard crust edges which I love so yeah. So I just wanted to show you a trick that I absolutely love for making sure that the cake is light and fluffy. I'm making red velvet right now and what I've done is I've added the egg yolks to the mixture but I've saved the egg whites and because I want to whisk them up first to make a nice fluffy uh, egg white mixture before I fold them into the rest of the mix and this just helps the cake stay nice and light and fluffy and really just delicious. So yeah, top tip. <laughs> So then I'm just going to take that mix and add it in to the rest of it. I'm going to start making the buttercream. I'm making three different buttercreams for the different cakes. Um, but because obviously it's one three tier cake, I want them to look as similar as possible. Now the way I'm going to try and do that is to make each buttercream as white as possible. And the best way to do that is by beating the butter until it is white and fluffy. And I'm so, so grateful to have my KitchenAid um, so I can do that without getting a super tired arm. So I'm using the attachment. It's not even a KitchenAid. I don't know why I keep calling it that. Sorry, it's like an alpha wise. I'll put it in the description box anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna beat that butter. beat that for a while and it's looking white enough to me nice and fluffy so I'm gonna add in the icing sugar now oh and I've also been leveling the cake as you can see I over combined the Oreos in this mixture that's why it looks so much darker than the others so I'm gonna alternate so there's three of each so I'm gonna alternate so that when you get a slice it'll just be like darker lighter darker and I just tasted some of the trimmings and this one just tastes sweeter because it's got more biscuit mixed in whereas this one is like more of a doughy. I definitely prefer it when you've just about combined them in. My turntable here, I just have a super cheapy one um, and then I've got a little silver board just there. Stack these cakes. So I'll stick the bottom one on with some buttercream. Just making sure it's in the middle. A little bit bigger. I would have wanted it to be. So I'm actually just going to trim that because it's coming out around the sides. Fabulous. And we will get started.
just going to take a little more off the top of this one. So it's not the most balanced. Okay, so it's pretty late now. Um, I've iced the one cake, the smallest cake. It just took me so long to get it to not look like the Leaning Tower of Pizza because it's so high. Um, I just don't really feel like my turntable is completely flat or either that or this table. Or maybe I'm just doing what I usually do and being an over perfectionist and overthinking it. Um, I literally don't know what time it is right now. I don't want to check because I'm scared it's like 1am and I don't really have a choice but to carry on. So I'm going to encourage myself by at least finishing one of the tiers. Um, designers have like a dark chocolate drip down the front. Um, with some foliage and some Oreos. So I'm thinking I'll do the dark chocolate drip first. I just need to choose the front of the cake. You know when every angle looks like the back of the cake? <laughs> Not in Jesus' name. Actually, we'll make the most naked bit the front because then if anything goes wrong, I can always put on more buttercream on top, which is a genius idea. Thank you, Lord. So I've just got my chocolate ganache which is literally not a ganache it's just melted dark chocolate with a little bit of oil to make it run a bit further um i think they wanted it coming over the left side here so i'm just gonna maybe i'll leave that cool actually i might put that by the windows just to let it cool down a bit more so i've added a little drip now i'm just gonna place the foliage first i think I kind of just want like a circle of it. Like a ring or this bend. There you go. What do you think? There we go. Looks alright to me. Looks like the plan, I think. The vanilla frosting is sorted, so I'm going to stack and ice the vanilla cake now, the big 12 inch one. When he was short of money, he gave money to his church or to his favorite charity. If I could leave one single idea with you, it is that idea. Whenever you feel short or in need of something, give what you want first and it will come back in buckets. That is true for money, a smile, love, or friendship. Hello, good morning, what's up? Everything has gone kind of wrong. The red velvet cake fell apart, as you can see, by this bowl of red velvet cake right here. So I had to stay up all night making another one. I'm very tired, it's the morning of the wedding. I have band rehearsals in about one hour, and I haven't left the house yet or got ready yet. We'll, we'll just see how this goes. But I just wanted to show you how I am doweling the cake. So dowels in tiered cakes are super important. It allows the cake to withstand the weight of the cake on top of it. So I've just got these plastic dowels, um, you can use bubble straws or whatever you want to use. And I measured it by poking one through the centre, so they come in this length, poke one through the centre and then cut it so that the rest are the exact same height. It's really important that they're all the exact same height, otherwise you'll have a wonky cake. And honestly, I'm just praying that this cake isn't the Leaning Tower of Pizza at this point because the amount of buttercream I had to put in that to make up for that bowl of cake right there because it fell apart, Lord have mercy, that's never happened to me before on all the days that it should happen, today, today, or rather last night. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just gonna cut that and dial the cake. I've also been like frantically learning my lyrics for today as well, so that's, that's always good. And then we're just gonna push these in, one in the center, and then I do like four around the edge. But you wanna make sure that you can't see them. You wanna make sure it's smaller than the size of the cake on top so mine aren't spread out by more than eight inch diameter and that is wonderful so i'm going to put that in the box pop it in the fridge and go get ready i'm a firm believer that it's better to arrive late than to arrive ugly but i don't think that counts for other people's weddings and um, so yeah i gotta go <laughs> so yeah these are the dowels in the top of the cake and this is the cake that fell apart how wonderful praise the lord that was fun Nearly there.